announcing another, a surprise announcement, a surprise even to me. I will be going on the Reverie Ra Roundtable podcast. Podcast? Panel. And we'll be debating. All right, I'll be there. Uh, how do I remind myself of this? Um, it's at what time again? It's going to be at 5. So two hours from now, we can do that. All right. That means, though, we need to get into this. We need to fucking get into this. Let's do it. Let's do this. We need to get into Prager U. We don't have any time to waste. It's Pragering time. Let's Prager. Is P Vosh going to debate Tim Pool IRL? Yes, he is. Vosh is going to debate Tim Pool IRL, and I'm very excited to see how that goes because it should be quite interesting. Probably won't be a bloodbath like we would hope for, but we'll see. We riding with fucking Biden in this channel. Fuck what anybody else says. True, we are riding with Biden to the as much as a, we can. We have no real choice, to be honest. It's the Biden bus or the Trump train um, that is going off the rails. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. Oh, he probably will make Tim look very stupid. Oh my God, then the real debate. It's like a Dark Souls boss. Yeah, exactly. Literally, we're on the rails over here. We are, well, we're, we're on the road and crate. If we wanted to keep the metaphor, like we don't want to mix metaphors, you get on the Biden bus and you ride with Biden on the road where the Trump train is about to careen off of a cliff, you know, because the bridge is broken because they blew it up. Anyway, let's get into the Prager U. So a couple of, like last week or so, I said that it would be really cool if we could watch the how to steal an election mail-in ballots video that Prager you did. But the thing was, we had a problem. It wasn't out yet, which it's really, really hard to say. Um, or sorry, it's really, really hard to watch something that isn't out yet. Well, guess what? Now it's out. So we don't have that problem anymore. We have overcome one of the greatest blockages that we've ever encountered on this channel. I know, big if true, right? Well, they say the Biden bus is broken down and sits at the station, but it's better than getting on the Trump train, which is falling off the tracks. I agree. I agree. Let's watch. Without any further Biden discussions, because I've had my fill of Joseph Biden, okay? I don't want to talk about Joe and Donald Trump and all these stupid assholes. I want to talk about Prager U. Well, but they're going to talk about Biden and Trump. But fuck it. Let's go. Is there a problem with universal mail-in balloting? Whoa. Now that's too low. There we go. Simple enough. You fill out a ballot. Now that's too loud. Stick it in the mail. Somebody counts it on election day. In Let's go back. Here we go. Is there a problem with universal mail-in balloting? Sounds simple enough. You fill out a ballot. Stick it in the mail. Somebody counts it on election day. In fact, we already do that with absentee ballots, right? True, we do already do that. So with why would universal mail-in balloting be any different? It well, wouldn't be. The biggest difference is that with absentee ballots, the voter specifically asks. That is not actually a big deal. See, here's the thing. Right off the bat, the entire thing is a stupid lie. Because as it turns out, soliciting a ballot doesn't mean shit. Because they don't just send you a ballot randomly. They send you an application. They send you an application. We've talked about this on the channel a number of times. How fucking annoying it is that this is the dumbest and most easily disprovable lie that you can ever engage with. They say, oh, they just send you a ballot and then there's all these ballots sitting around. That's not how it works. That's not how it fucking works. Yes, Gina, exactly. The real problem is that it means that Republicans would lose every single time. Asks for a ballot it's with the universal mail-in ballot. Hey, thanks for the follow. Ballots Happy to are have mailed you. out in mass. I don't know, Peggy Chan. Millions of people who would normally go to the polls vote by mail instead. Yes. No national election has ever been conducted this way, and there. No national. Hey, Cal Kurz. Happy to have you. Welcome. Um, sorry, I didn't see you in chat there. Uh, it's really funny. Um, no national election has ever happened in 2020 in the middle of a global pandemic that's killed over 200,000 Americans. Hmm, bit strange, bit strange that. There are very good reasons to be concerned that one ever should. Reason number one, bureaucratic incompetence. 
I don't, ah, yes. As we know, elections normally are full of bureaucratic competence, like um, Republicans instituting voter ID laws that make it take out eight hours to be able to vote. Like that, right? Like, um, like Republicans shutting down voting locations using technicalities in state law so that people have to travel 50 miles to the nearest voting location, stand in line for five hours in the middle of winter, and also get sick. Such bureaucratic, uh, just excellence. That is what I call bureaucratic excellence versus the bureaucratic incompetence of people mailing in ballots that are incredibly easy to verify and saving the lives of many people. Hmm, interesting. I think I have to sell you on the idea that when the government bureaucracy takes on a big new project with little preparation, the results aren't pretty. We've It's really funny. You know, who's in charge of the government right now? Do you know who's in charge of the, uh, you know who's in charge of the, uh, mail service right now? It's, it's those small government Republicans. And it's weird. It's almost like we've had an entire year to prepare this election. And Donald Trump and his cronies have made it harder for us to do that preparation. So yeah, I would agree that doing things on short notice is pretty difficult, especially when you have a Republican in office who PragerU supports and they fuck it up intentionally. <sighs> kind of weird how that works. Hey, Stray Katma, welcome to the stream. Seen those results as it relates to mail-in balloting already. Oh, have we? Wisconsin was one of the first states to hold a primary in the coronavirus era. Mm. It saw an influx in mail-in votes as a result. Predictably, this led to serious snafus. Thousands of requested ballots were not sent. 1,600 hmm. ballots were found in a mail processing center the day after the election. Really? That's weird. Oh, hold on a second, though. Wait, wait a second. Yeah, this is PragerU. Yeah, oh, they're absolutely allergic to facts. They're completely disingenuous. You know what else is really funny about this? Um... 1,600 ballots were found in a mail processing center the day after the election. Hey, guess what? You can still count those. You can still count those. Oh, we don't even need a source for this. Because guess what? This doesn't, this isn't necessary. I mean, this isn't great. But guess what? If you find valid ballots the day after the election and it's close enough to matter, then you just go, oh, we need to count these. You know that they usually don't declare and finalize an election until all of the ballots have been gathered. And if there's an enormous amount of missing ballots, those will flag that they need to, they need to look for them. It's just like, you know, why are we watching this provided? Uh, we don't use that. We don't use the R slur here, Stray Katma. Sorry about that. Um, but why are we watching this stupidity? Which I mean, I guess it's you know, whatever. Anyway, point is, um, oh, do they have sources here? Let's check it. Let's see if they've got any sources. Hey, look at that. We got the emergency warning. Um, uh, I doubt they have any sources. Nah, look at that. No, for the, they don't have any fucking sources. These motherfuckers. These motherfuckers. Let's look it up. Let's look it up live on stream. Ready? Let's find out. Fox, uh, glitches, mail problems. This was in 2019. Wisconsin absentee votes didn't get counted. Elections Commission still searching for answers on a whole bunch of random small <laughs> things. Let's see. See Hafer News, AP News. Is there any like reasonable source? Let's let's take a look at Fox 11 online. An unknown number of voters in Appleton and Oshkosh. Abs uh, had absentee ballots that never made it to their destination. You know, there were so many questions after the sev April 7 election about what happened. The, it, the Wisconsin Elections Commission says it finally has some answers. We set out to look at the data and put some hard numbers on it and figure out in places where we could what went wrong. The WC has been trying to figure this out, blah, blah, blah. When you think about it, these are the most conscientious of voters. They want to vote. They take a conscientious step. For the first time, they release an estimate of the number of requested ballots. Uh, it said about 1,600 ballots were found in a tub in a U.S. Postal Service facility. Sounds like that was a, a, a genuine error. Um, 
oh, you're good, Stray Cat. And the thing is, they already have way more clout than ever, and we need to be able to debunk them. There needs to be a swarm of videos, including mine, that are that anytime you search Prager U, you find more convincing videos than theirs. This isn't giving them clout. This is giving this is me stealing their clout for a good purpose. The rats. Rats. We got we got spoilers. Here we go. Rats. Put your votes in a tub and give them a rub. The post office gave us little information. They gave us the numbers, but they haven't told us very much about them. We got a call from the FBI, heard nothing. WC leaves two explanations. Either a user did not apply the mailing labels, okay, or these ballots were bundled together and collectively encountered an issue. So this is literally just an ax this is literally just an accident. This is literally just an accident. So oh, do they do that? Oh, okay, let's see what their sources are. Oh, ooh. Let's do it. Let's find out. Let's see what they cited for this. Because their citations are probably even worse than anything we can find. Let's find out. Where are their citations? Facts and sources. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest... Bureaucratic incompetence. Here's the source. Let's find out. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Thousands of absentee ballots weren't counted because of mailing problems and tech glitches. So... Donald Trump's USPS and Donald Trump's USPS. So both of these were the fault of Donald Trump's USPS. And they're even still, even still considering the fact that Donald Trump's USPS is the one who fucked this up, it's still just a fuck up and not evidence of voter fraud. Not even close. In fact, the fact that they found the missing ballots means that those ballots can be counted. This is not difficult. This is not difficult. Nearly 2,700 ballots in Milwaukee were not sent and about 1,600 in Fox Valley were not processed because of computer glitches and mailing problems. In Milwaukee, 2,693 voters were not sent absentee ballots after technical issues marred their production. Oh, this is the one. This was the misprint one. This is the, this is the story about the misprints. They did end up getting their ballots. The first ones were just misprinted, so they resent them. About half of those people eventually voted, voted either with replacement absentee ballots or at the polls. This is so stupid. This is the one with the misprints. They're, they're, no, they're smashing these numbers together. In Milwaukee, there was a misprinting issue where one of the printers broke and before anybody could catch it, it printed a whole bunch of smudged um, absentee ballots because, you know, they print using industrial printers. And so it was like, ah, shit, we have to reprint these. And then they did. And then the people got them. So again, giant nothing burger. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. There, we did the debunk. Yeah, they, they absolutely rely on people not checking sources because then they can just make up whatever the fuck they want and put big spooky numbers on the screen. 1,600? Ah! The day yeah, it makes you wonder, Rakasan, right? Why can't they just cite their sources in the description? Well, I don't know. Maybe it would make them look like dishonest pieces of shit. After the election, 23,000 23, votes were rejected due to missing signatures or other votes were rejected Wait. due to missing signatures or other missing information. That's weird. It's really funny. It's almost like if you don't sign your ballot in person, your vote will also be not counted. Weird. And in fact, it's really funny, too, because um, a lot of states that have mail in um, mail in ballots have a thing where you can check, you get a little stub. In fact, I have it here somewhere. I have mine here somewhere. You have a, you get a little, uh, you get a little tear off stub on the top of your ballot that lets you go online and check if your ballot was counted. And if your ballot has a signature issue, it'll tell you online, and they'll email you, and you can go in and sign the ballot to make sure it gets counted. Yeah, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. This is nothing. 23,000 ballots that were rejected because people didn't sign them is not a sign of voter fraud. It's not a sign of bureaucratic incompetence. That's just people not for just fucking forgetting to sign it. And as it turns out, in order for it to be a legal document, you have to sign it. Well, it does, but 
Well, no, Ace, man, it doesn't entirely. It does a little bit. But the thing is, is if you go in to fix a ballot, you can go in and go into an office, right? Yeah, I know, but this isn't, but, but Ace Man, this is talking about a rare occurrence. If you forget to sign your ballot, then you have to go in, obviously. Obviously. You have to go fix it. Most people are not going to forget to sign their ballots. It says in huge letters, don't forget to sign. This is, it doesn't, it doesn't be, and also, if people are going in one by one to go sign their ballot, that means that they don't have to, they're not going to be crowding into an election center. So it doesn't fully, it doesn't, it, it sucks that they have to go in, but it doesn't make it as bad as if they were all crowding into the voting center in the first place. And those are the mistakes we know about in just one state and in one primary election, when fewer people than in the general election typically bother to cast a vote. In Pennsylvania, where they delayed the date of their primary to get better prepared for the expected increase in mail-in balloting, they still couldn't handle the volume. Remember, do you know do you know who it is who's been uh, cutting down the volume that they can process? Does the name uh, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy sound familiar? The guy who disassembled 700 um, 700 mass mail ballot processing machines, mostly in Democratic centers? Does that sound familiar? Because we did coverage of that on this motherfucking channel. So if you're wondering why they can't handle the volume, it's not because of the USPS. The USPS has said, we need more machines. And DeJoy is the one who disassembled those machines. Yep, exactly. This is an old Republican tactic. They break the process. Imagine this. Imagine if you were trying to like... Um, Imagine if you were like a really dishonest person and you wanted your wife to buy a new fridge for the house. And she's like, no, we should save our money to pay for the kids to go to college. And you were like, hmm, what if I break the fridge and then I show that as evidence that the fridge is broken and she'll buy me the new fridge. <laughs> and then those goddamn kids won't have to go to college. That's what the Republicans do every single day year that they're in power no joke what they do is they break the system intentionally and then they go they go to the people and they go look the system it works like shit but it only works like shit under those goddamn republicans this is their tactic this is their playbook and the faster and the more the faster we realize this and the more people that realize that the, the less likely we are to fall for this stupid type of trick. Oh, the bureaucracy doesn't work well. The government doesn't work well. Well, yes, it doesn't work well when you break it intentionally. Half of Philadelphia's votes were still uncounted a week after the election. In Virginia, hmm. more than half a million... Why does it matter? Why does it matter if it took them an extra week to count the election? Isn't democracy that matters? Not everything being solved in one day? Hmm. Applications for ballots were mailed with incorrect information. Some of the applications... Notice, notice, notice the little sleight of hand that they did there. Oops. Notice the little sleight of hand. Watch. Listen carefully. ...were still uncounted a week after the election. In Virginia, more than half a million... App applications. Sorry, my camera's in the way of it right now. Let me just move my camera up here. Applications. This is applications they're talking about. They switched without even notice, without barely saying it. They switched from talking about ballots to applications. Applications are not the same thing as a ballot, not even close. An application is a piece of paper. You could lose a hundred applications and it doesn't matter. You could send a million applications and that would not have a single impact on the election, except maybe that more people would apply. They're not the same thing, but they do this. It is literally, they've been doing this so much. Donald Trump has been doing this, talking about applications and ballots as if those are interchangeable, but they're not. They're not the same thing. It's like, it's like it is equivalent to saying if every time you applied to a job, you said you got that job. Imagine if you applied to be the CEO of Amazon and you obviously didn't get that job, but you said, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO of Amazon because you applied to the job. 
just because you applied. That's f fucking dumb. It's so fucking stupid. Applications for ballots were mailed with incorrect information. Some of the applications went to the wrong addresses. Some went to dead voters. One even went to a pet. Yes, because they're applications. They're just applications, you fools. You dishonest fools. Under the best of circumstances, the bureaucracy struggles with mail-in balloting. Under less than the best of circumstances, no, that's not a scenario we want to... Yeah, then fund the fucking postal service, you fool. Sorry. Face. Which brings us to reason number two for concern. Shoddy security. Here's what the... Oh my god, are they going to push ballot security? What the fuck? Okay, let's find out. Let's just New York find out. Times said about voting by mail in an article in 2012. Keep in mind, they were talking about traditional absentee balloting, not a mass mail-in of ballots. There is a bipartisan consensus that voting by mail, whatever its impact, is more easily abused than other forms. No kidding. There's no evidence of that. That's not true. In May 2020, New Jersey conducted its first ever all-mail election. One month later, two elected officials were. You got some evidence of that, Red Radius? Oh, oh, never mind. I was gonna say that was. I was gonna say you should look a little deeper because it was the GOP. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. What are they talking about here? They did an all male election. Two elected officials were among. And two elected officials got arrested. So the ones who did the fraud got elected. Bet they were Republicans. I bet they were Republicans four charged with criminal conduct involving mail-in ballots. One operative confessed to stealing ballots, both completed and uncompleted, out of mailboxes. Yeah, and guess what? He's in trouble. He got in trouble. He got in fucking trouble. Let's look it up. Let's look up this source. Let's look at- oh, I really want to know. Let's see. It's down here. Let's look at this. Here we go. Here we go. Error and fraud at issue as absentee voting rises. On the morning of the primary here in August, the local elections board met to decide which absentee ballots to count. It was not an easy job. The board tossed out some ballots because they arrived without the signature. Hey, look at that. Look at that. What problem is this again? They they br br breezed right over that one, didn't they? It, it rejected one that said C inside where the signature should have been. Well, that's missing a, a signature. And it debated what to do with ballots, which the signature on the envelope did not match the one in the county's files. Hmm, I bet that's a law. I bet that's a law that's based off a of fucking Republican. This R is not like that R, Judge Augustus D. Akins Jr. said, suggesting a ballot should be rejected. Ian Sancho, the election supervisor here, disagreed. This K is like that K, he replied, and then persuaded his colleagues to count the vote. Scenes like this will play out in many elections next month because Florida and other states are swiftly moving from voting at a polling place towards voting by mail. The last general election in Florida in 2010, 23% of voters cast absentee ballots up from 15 nationwide use of... Yet votes by mail are less likely to be counted, more likely to be compromised, and more likely to be contested than those casted in a voting booth, statistics show. Hmm. Where's those statistics? No citation notice. Election officials reject almost 2% of ballots caught cast by mail. Double the rate for in-person voting. Yes, because people don't sign them. The, the way that you do that is you ensure that people know they need to sign them. Yeah. This is the opposite of what they're arguing. They're arguing there's more fraud. This is saying there's less. They're pickier with ballots. This is just nothing. This is a giant nothing burger. So that's for this one. There's no actual... Studies. This is the only one. In the last presidential election, 35.5 million voters requested absentee ballots, but only 27.9 million absentee voters were votes were counted, according to a study. The, the study doesn't have a link. The study doesn't have a link. Hmm. That's weird. 
That's real weird. All right, we've seen enough of this one. Let's find out this one. Patterson City Council vice president among four charged with voting fraud in May special election. A Patterson, New Jersey a Patterson, New Jersey councilman and a councilman elect in the same city with two other men face voting fraud charges in, in connection with the May 12th special election, the state attorney general's office. So city council people, this is not federal. This is city council people. Are you fucking kidding? Council member Michael Jackson, who serves as the council's vice president and councilman elect Alex Mendez were among the four charged with criminal conduct involving mail-in ballots during the election, which was overshadowed almost the start from widespread fraud allegations. So they got caught immediately. The Board of Elections previously said about 800 votes would be set aside and not counted. Okay. Okay, they got caught. They got caught and it was rectified. They, they got fucking caught. And, and, and the former mayor went to prison after a conspiracy conviction. So this is just a really, really corrupt police department. This is nothing. Again, nothing. They have nothing. They have nothing. They're stretching so hard at this point. Other operatives compile the database of signatures of prospective voters and then use them to fill out ballots on behalf of their preferred candidates. And we only... What? Oh, this is the same one. All of these are from the New Jersey Patterson City Council. Let's just look real quick. Patterson. Patterson, New Jersey is a town of less than 200,000 people. Less than 200,000 people. And their entire section on this is based off of one bad election where everybody got caught. No, wait, no, Ace Man, that's not true. That's not true. They got caught. They got caught. Wait, wait, if you can make, it's, it's not hard to make a fraudulent look. Listen, watch, watch. All right, all right, here we go. Watch this. Watch, just watch. Nope, here we go. Watch, I'm going to show you why it matters that they got caught. Ready? Here we go. We're doing a draw. We're doing a little draw stream. Look at this. You guys get a treat. A special draw stream. Oh, no, no, no. We're doing much more than that. It's going to be wonderful. Just watch. Ready? Here we go. Here we are. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's pick a nice green. Green. Bam. There we go. Okay. Let's, let's, let's draw. Boop, 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 boop. 20, no, $200. Oh my God. Wait, I fucked up. Here's the seal. Here's the other seal. Bam! Bam! Look at that. I, any but, look at that. Look at how easy it is to counterfeit money. All I would need to do is print this out. Look at how easy it is. I can, I can, I would be so rich. Oh, wait, but I would get caught. I would get caught if I did this, which means that while it is indeed easy to make a fraudulent $200 bill, it is very hard to succeed. You think this is Benjamin Franklin? No, this is um, Herman uh, Bajerman. He's a very, very, very famous. Um, I know, I know. A lot of people don't know of him. He's the most famous president. Herman Bajerman.
He was American. Look at this guy. There you go. Look. Damn. One is easier to catch than the other. Not really, as it turns out. As it turns out, when people do voter fraud, we catch them all the time. The rate of voter fraud is fucking incredibly low. That is an objective fact. Go if you don't, if listen, we're not going to dive into the nitty gritty of, of how every single one of this goes, but there is a, an abundance of data. If you want to do the slightest bit, yeah, you can fraud anything. This would be caught immediately because as it turns out, it's hard to make counterfeit money. All right, let's get back to this. Only know about it because they got caught. Yeah. Election fraud only figures to get easier. Because of a new... Again, we only know about it. Damn, we only know that Demon Mama committed committed money, committed fucking counterfeiting crimes because she got caught with this very realistic $200 bill. Demon Mama owned, live, owned. I got caught. Caught being a money counterfeiter. Fuck, oh, f oh my God. Fucking Prager you makes me mauled. Weapon in the cheater's arsenal. Ballot harvesting. This ah, is the term for when a go. third party, usually a campaign worker or activist, mm -hmm. goes to people's homes and collects their ballots. With ballot harvesting. Yeah. And there's no problem with this. There's no problem with this at all. You don't even have to put your ballot in the mailbox. Vote harvesters will pick it up for you. The opportunities for mischief, say, pressuring people to vote a certain way, Destroying ballots or filling out ballots. What do you mean pressuring people to vote a certain way? You're picking up their completed val ballot. What do you mean? The fuck do you mean? What? Those who didn't bother to vote are endless. Filling vote out. Wait, wait a minute. That would be illegal anyway. This is already illegal. This is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Red Radius. Literally, this is so stupid. So let me get this straight. Hiring Donald Trump going on Twitter and encouraging people to join the Trump army is not as bad as volunteers picking up any ballots in a neighborhood. Do you think they use like x-ray goggles? Like they're just like, let me put on my x-ray goggles. Ah, this is a Republican one. We'll throw this one out. You do realize you can't see into the ballot, right? You literally can't see into the ballot. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. Vote harvest. Yeah, not only did they get caught ballot. Okay, they ballot harvest everywhere. Here's the thing they don't tell you. Republicans ballot harvest everywhere. Obviously. But the thing is, they only do it in areas they know are safe for them. Democrats will obviously do the same, but there's also large-scale uh, ballot harvesting initiatives that, that target places where people don't have cars, for example. Like, imagine you live in New York City and... Uh, you don't have a car, you have to commute to go to wherever you're going. A ballot harvesting initiative would could go and say, hey, we're going to walk through this neighborhood and offer to deliver any ballots that people haven't delivered yet. They don't know if they're Republicans or Democrats. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Anybody can do that, Ace Man. There's nothing wrong with that. I can do that. If I go take, listen, I know, in fact, here's even worse. I know, I know who my partners vote for. Ooh, I'm a, de if I go deliver my, if I go deliver my partner's ballots, am I a democratic ballot harvester? Hey, I'm ballot harvesting over here. Get a load of this. I don't know what that word is. I don't know if that's a bad word, so I'm not going to say it. Harvesting that targets senior citizens for their ballots even has its own name, granny farming. Reason number three to be concerned. Granny farming. <laughs> granny farming. Who oh boy. The likelihood of long delays in determining final results. Americans are used to knowing who won and who lost within hours of the polls closing up. 
This is literally the argument from impatient Americans. On election day, of course. Are we going to eat grandma? Maybe, Gina. We might have to. We might have to if Trump wins. That's right. You heard it here, folks. If Donald Trump wins, you will be forced to eat your grandmother. If Donald Trump wins, it is he will pass a law that will make you eat your grandmother while she's alive. You will literally have to break your grandmother's arm off and go and just chew it. All stringy and 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 flabby and whatever. Doesn't matter. You will be eating your grandmother. That is the that is a fact. Source, trust me, bro. Um, sorry, Atana Noaji. Close races take longer to sort out. Just one. Just one red radius. It's not that bad. Yeah, we're eating grandma gayfesh. If Donald Trump wins, you will be forced to eat your grandmother. It's just how it goes. But the longer it takes, the less legitimate an election seems. That is exactly... Hey! That's really funny! That's really funny! That's literally what... Do you, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I know we're stopping this all the time. Oh, you posted it in Politics General? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Did you? All right. Let's see. You're, I'm rich. Yes. <laughs> Incredible. Here we go. Wait. You're rich. You're going to be, you're going to be doing good. That's the demon mama stimulus package right there. And seems. That oh, is yeah. Exa I was going to say right here. This, this right here is their tactic. Remember, we, we did a whole panel about this. I did a panel about the Red Mirage. Their goal is to make it look illegitimate. They're just literally telling you their plan right here. They're just telling you right here. Legitimate an election seems. That is exactly what happened in the 2000 presidential election. Bush v. Gore. That's not exactly what then, happened, but the okay. the dispute was focused on a single state, Florida. It was finally settled by the Supreme Court over a month later. If we have a national election that relies heavily on mail-in voting, we're almost certain to see a significant delay before we get the final Yeah, and who cares? We should be okay with that because we're supposedly the most advanced democracy in the world. We should be perfectly fine with the delay. Who cares if we have to wait in order to make sure that everyone's vote gets counted, right? Right, Republicans? Right, you motherfuckers? You should be okay with it, right? Because you believe in democracy? Mm. Yeah, didn't mention the Brooks Brothers riots. Results. From the post office to the vote counters, the system is just not set up for it. In a close contest involving massive mail-in voting, lawsuits disputing the results are inevitable. This could delay final results even longer. You got nothing to, and you got nothing to hide, do you? a single state, it's likely to involve multiple states. This is a recipe for civil unrest. They're priming their audience. They're priming their audience to fucking lose their shit when Donald Trump gets his shit kicked in. This is a recipe for civil unrest as frustration and fear of a stolen election grips voters. Bureaucratic incompetence, shoddy security, long delays. These are just some of the concerns any reasonable person should have over universal mail-in balloting. What's the solution? This is, this, these are none of the questions that any reasonable person should have. Simple. At this point. If you need to vote yeah, absentee, Tim Pool posting request hours. the ballot. Otherwise, vote like you always have, in person. I'm Eric. Go catch COVID so that Donald Trump, so that there's a small chance that Donald Trump will lose the election by a smaller margin. Go die. Go die for the Republican Party because you are an expendable worm. God, Republicans are cucked. They are so motherfucking cucked. Remember, I say this all the time. Republicans are the most cucked individuals on the fucking planet. So fucking cucked. They're, they're people. This guy just literally told them to go die from COVID. He's just like, yeah, go vote in person. Catch COVID. Just make sure that Donald Trump wins. S make sure that the Trump family keeps getting rich. Wait, if folks can protest, can't they vote? Huh? Huh? What? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, what? What are you, what are you talking about? Die for the line. Die for the line. What are the questions tonight?
Oh, wow, that's going to be complicated. Is Dylan Burns on tonight? Uh oh. No Dylan Burns. I don't. I won't be able to. Oh God. Okay. Ooh, this is gonna get spicy tonight. Ooh, I just got the. I just got the topic list. Sorry about that. Anyway, we have another one. Wait, what is this going on here? Hold on. I'm trying to see what's happening in Twitch chat. Twitch chatters, you need to come join the fucking site. Join the fucking site. Wait, wait, Goofy, just just come talk on the site. It's easier on the site. I mean, if folks can po protest in the streets, can't we vote in persons if we wore masks and social distanced? Um, no. There's a couple of differences. One, um, first of all, the protests in the streets, people were outside, socially distanced, and largely wore masks while it was still, um, while it was still imperfect they were protesting for very real and good reasons and um voting ha as it turns out legally has to happen indoors in close proximity well yeah but that's because you have to the oh my oh my god social distancing is not about never ever um hey it is isn't it easy in crade it's super easy to join the site it's super easy. White Nervosa made it mega easy. You can verify your account through all kinds of ways. Yeah. Yeah, we all have to do things, but the point is to reduce the risk, and voting often involves standing in close pro um, proximity for a very long amount of time. That's why we say we should switch to mail-in voting a very, very easy and clear system. Republicans don't want to move to mail-in because they would lose. They would lose because as it turns out, it's a lot easier to cause delays, clogs, closed polling locations, et cetera, et cetera, in person than it is by mail. There are many states, my own state, the state I live in right now has had mail-in voting for years and we have no fucking issues. We have no issues with mail-in voting, like literally nothing. It runs smooth and easy. The only reason that we don't do this is because Republicans are willing to keep us trapped in the Stone Age for as long as possible, as long as it means they can keep power. That's what it means. Well, Biggs, I'm very happy. Hope you wore your mask, and I hope you don't get COVID. That would be great. We're in the middle of another spike. Oh, yeah, and there's also the whole poll watchers issue. Let's not forget that. Yeah, if we could move to mail-in protesting, hey, that'd be great. I mean, there are some ways of kind of doing that, isn't there? Anyway, let's uh, let's watch the uh, the next thing. Let's watch the next one because we have another we have another uh, Prager U one to watch.